All right, guys, welcome back to the starter deck series. Now we're looking at Germany. So let's go take a quick peek at what cards we... Oops, wrong way. Let's go take a quick peek at what we unlocked with Germany for uh, those first uh, seven levels of progression. So first thing they're going to give us is a Panzer 35T. So solid card. It's a very popular card. Uh, combos with infantry, where if you have an infantry on the board that you control, it reduces the op cost down to zero. So you could uh, basically, for two credits, blitz this out and attack something if you have an infantry, because it'll be zero, to, zero cost to move it. If you don't have an infantry, it costs one to move it, which makes it a little bit more expensive, uh, a little bit less value. But uh, generally, you'll see this card played a lot because of that. Uh, the decks will usually be structured in such a way that you can get value off of it. Uh, the Flam Panzer is still a pretty solid card uh, that you'll see played very often. Um, it just got nerfed, so now it only deals uh, the destruction to a ground unit. It used to be able to kill airplanes, so it was really nice against Bird Air to kill the Swordfish and the Gladiators, but now you can't do that. But it still plays really well and is a uh, strong card. Tax Strike is one of the stronger removals that Germany has. This is a great card. Two damage to a unit. Uh, but if it's in the support line, you deal four damage to a unit. So attack strike is very useful for getting rid of artillery, bombers, stuff like that. Air blitz, meh, I don't know. I don't know why this is in here, to tell you the truth. Um, it's not bad. I mean, do three damage for three cost. Uh, this just got nerfed. It used to be a four cost, four damage. And at that price point and damage level, it was a higher value card. It was meta. But then ever since the nerf, you really don't see it around much anymore. But maybe in the lower to mid-range decks, uh, this guy helps out for getting around guards and dealing that final blow. Uh, the Panzer IV F2 is a very solid card. It's a staple of discard meta. Uh, it's a staple of uh, most sort of mid-range uh, Germany decks that you'll see. Just because this bounce card is uh, great. I mean, you deploy it and you retreat a unit. Uh, support line units go back to the player's hand. Front line units go back a row to the support line. But of course, if the support line's full and you retreat a unit in the front line, it then goes to the player's hand. So a little bit of mechanics there where you could retreat cards and clear, clear yourself some room to move your other units around. And uh, or clear a guard out of the way so you can hit the HQ for the big win. Um, super strong card in draft too, so you're going to want to pick that in draft. Uh, the Panther G can't be targeted by enemy orders. Again, super strong tank. Uh, it's a very good special card. And uh, just the fact that it can't be targeted by enemy orders makes it a lot harder to deal with. It's a 6-5 stats with heavy armor. So, I mean, you need a 6 attack to deal with it or you're going to be trading multiple units into it or you need to have something like Death from Above or like a random removal card to kill it. It, it can still be removed by an order, but it's got to be like those random ones or area of effect ones. It can't be a direct targeted order, as it says on the card. Uh, so the Panzer 3L. This is a decent elite. Not the best elite from Germany, but it's a good elite. Uh, this guy here has a plus one attack for each non-tank type you control. So you combo this with an infantry and an artillery, maybe a bomber or a plane. You can get this up to being a four, five, six level of attack. And it has blitz. So it costs about seven credits, obviously. Three plus two plus two to deploy and move and advance and attack something, like to hit the HQ, for example. Uh, but if you have these other units on the board, you could buff it up. Uh, serves good as a removal card too. I mean, just to hit something hard to get it cleared out if you get the uh, attack buff on it. So those are the cards you're going to unlock using uh, your Germany to get through the uh, first seven progressions. So the Germany starter deck plays with Germany and USA, which is a good combo. We stick with that combo, but we make some adjustments because uh, you can see this starter deck here doesn't include cards like the P-51 Mustang. And the reason it doesn't is because the P-51 Mustang used to just be a vanilla plane. Uh, Actually, I don't even remember if it was vanilla or what the effects were, but the effects, it just got buffed in the last patch, and now the effects on it to deal five damage to a random aircraft is absolutely amazing. So we're definitely going to want that in there. Uh, in any case, let's go look and see how we changed it. So this is an improved Germany-USA starter deck. Uh, so we got the Panzer IIA from Germany, just a good body, 1-3 blitz body, just like the Greyhound is, right? These 1-3 tanks are great. They have blitz, plug up the front line, and keep on uh, putting that front line pressure. Iron from the north. Uh, throw that in here. Just uh, if we have a, a high front line uh, aggressive deck, this we could probably get value off of to get some extra credits on a, on a turn that we want to uh, get some extra credits. So what it says is if you control the front line, gain three credits. So it cost one. So really you're getting two extra credits if you play that out, if you have the front line. We got blackout to pin any enemy airplanes and draw a card uh, because Germany does have trouble with card draw. Um, so that's definitely something we need in there to try to get some draw going. We got our T-19 howitzers from the U.S. So it's our staple artillery, deals with guards, and it's a nice two-drop to be able to just uh, ping some units and deal some damage out. 
Uh, we got the sudden strike in there as a solid removal to kill anything that costs two credits or less. Flat out, uh, kill it. Oops, sorry. Uh, Panzer Grenadier. These guys here can move and attack on the same turn. So even though it's infantry, which would typically, you know, deploy it, then move it, then attack, would be all the stages to get to the other side of the board. This guy, you could deploy it, then it kind of acts like a tank. You could move it and attack in the same turn. Uh, so we got our Panzer 35T, and like I said, uh, you're going to want to trigger this off of with an infantry. So the cheaper infantry that we have based on what was available was really, I'm just using this Panzer Grenadier. Uh, we don't have anything else in here that could help out. Uh, and so we got the MEBF 109 as just a three cost airplane with three, four stats. I mean, if you compare this to a Flame Panzer for stats, it's pretty good. And it's an airplane, so we can attack from the support line. So that's exactly uh, what we want. Good little uh, tempo card uh, to keep the game moving fast. Volks Grenadier is just a good size body for the th for the cost of the 3.6 body. Reichsbank again, because we're just trying to get really fast tempo early. So we wanted to try this out with Reichsbank to see if we can get the extra five credits. This just got buffed. Uh, so gaining five extra credits is a lot. And uh, that could really uh, turn a game around to get those extra cards down. Uh, the Panzer 38T is a kind of an expensive card for what you get with the 2-2, but it does draw you an extra card. It's a cantrip card, so you get a replacement card when you deploy it. Um, so that's really why it's in here. That's the value of this card. Eagle Claws, two damage on all the enemies on the support line. Doesn't touch the HQ, but all the enemies. So it gets rid of uh, artillery and little bombers and things like that that are on the support line that you need to clear. Uh, Panzer Grenadier gives us a plus two to all of our tanks. So this is like a... Uh, a timing card you want to save this to when you can get good value with your tanks and uh, buff them up with a plus two for that one turn and, and really do some damage so the sherman tank here uh, from the u.s uh, because of its draw effect is really what we want this in here for like i said germany has trouble with draw uh, not a lot of cards that give you straight up draw so the sherman is in here the problem is obviously that you have to have a u.s unit in the front line so a four cost tank with four four stats is decent and uh, if we're able to proc it to get the card draw, that'll be a, a nice sweet bonus. Uh, so here we get the Panzer 3J, and uh, it has Blitz with a 4-5 body. So you can see the difference, right? For the same cost, we get one extra defense and Blitz instead of a card draw, right? So you can see the difference in the mechanics of the cost and how that all gets balanced out. Two death from above. Uh, remember, we unlocked the other one from finishing the U.S., so if you're not doing these in the same order as me, you may not have these same cards here. But uh, the Death from Above is a solid removal. This works great, like I said, against the tank that can't be targeted with enemy orders. Death from Above could uh, destroy that for you. The Panzer Grenadier uh, is a 4-5 body for 4 cause guard while in the front line. It's just a big, big buffy in infantry, so that's why he's in there. Uh, we don't care too much about the guard ability, though it may come in handy remotely every now and then. Uh, the Panzer 4G is just the big body tank that we get in the starter cards. So we're definitely going to include this because it's that 5-6 tank. Too bad it doesn't have blitz, but at the end of the day, it's a good body, and we're going to get that out there in the field, hopefully, to deal some damage and absorb some damage. Mustang is the plane that we want to definitely get in here. Uh, deal 5 damage to a random enemy unit. Super strong card. The Mitchell, deal 3 damage to a random enemy unit. The B-17, destroy a random enemy unit. The DFA on a stick, like I said in the USA video. So these two cards here, you need to finish the USA camp. Uh, get USA to level 7 first. Watch that video. Use that deck. Do these in the same order as me so you have the same decks and uh, you'll be able to go out there with these same decks and uh, fire it up. So only a couple of differences between the starter deck and this deck. Some notable improvements based on having done the USA campaign first. I keep calling it a campaign, but I just mean the first seven levels of the progression uh, to get those seven free cards. And then you could really beef up this Germany deck, uh, the starter deck, to get a, a good push to... Uh, to level up your Germany nation and get all the rewards that come with the leveling it up in the new progression system. So that's it, guys. Enjoy the Germany starter deck. Let's jump into some games and see it in action. Catch you later. All right, here we go. The game already in progress because the record button didn't go uh, right away for me. Um, so we missed the mulligan, but that's fine. Let's take a look here. Obviously, having three three drops in our hand against uh, a German mirror match is not ideal. And keeping in mind, we're at rank 18 now, so we've been flying up through the ranks from rank 25 to rank 18 so far, just the starter decks. And so our opponents are going to get harder. Um, you know, we might even start to see some losses. Haven't seen any losses yet in this run, but I'm sure they're coming as we uh, climb up the ladder here to rank 18. Uh, I'm sure we're going to start to see a lot more elites and specials in our opponents' hands, and uh, we'll start to see some uh, more challenging matches. 
which is good. It's all part of the game. You don't want to just be boring going all the way up through the top uh, without without losing ever. You want to have some challenges. Uh, so we got three Volks Grenadiers in our hand. And, uh, oh no, sorry, that's two Panzer Grenadiers and one Volks Grenadier. The Panzer Grenadier we want to try to save to buff our tanks with, but we might just need to start putting down some bodies. All right, so he got some early hits on us there with uh, the Panzer 35 push with the infantry. Uh, but with two artillery down, this could have some uh, promise to it. Three health against these one attack units he's putting down, but he did play Reichsbank, so he's got eight credits to play with on turn four here. So he's probably going to go wide with some units. So we got the MEBF in our hands, so we can play down the fighter plane to block that bomber. That bomber is dangerous because if he does start hitting our HQ with that bomber, it'll discard a card out of our hand every time. So we definitely want to deal with the Stuka. It's not a great bomber in the later ranks or higher meta decks, but in early games like now, in this rank level, uh, it could be a pretty strong card if it's able to get off its attacks. And he obviously, with Reichsbank, was able to play it a little bit sooner than usual. He's still got four credits to play with, and he's thinking for a really long time. So if I know what he's going to do. All right. All right, Panzer Grenadier. So he's got a lot of threats on the board here. Uh, we got to play... We don't have the front line, so Ironford in the north is not going to give us any value just yet. But that is a good card if we can get value off of it, get a chance to play it. We have to play the fighter so that we can eliminate the threat of the bomber. The bomber can no longer attack anything on the support line until he deals with the fighter. So you notice there we ping the Panzer Grenadier because they can move and attack in one turn. And this way, if he goes after an artillery, it'll trade. So the one attack re return on the artillery will kill that one. And the tank in the front line doesn't have enough attack to kill the artillery, whereas that uh, infantry unit that can move an attack in one, uh, in one turn, basically act like a tank, it can uh, kill the artillery. So at least it's a trade now if he does that. And that's what I say with artillery. Like, you want to do a bit of math and try to get the best value you can. Um, of course, if he plays Barrage, now we have minus three attack across the board, which means he can just mow us down and uh, not take any damage back so that kind of sucks for us he does only have one credit left so i think he did a little bit of a <laughs> mathematical calculation error there uh, which is surprising given the name of the player uh, they're usually pretty, uh, pretty good at math usually and uh, that was just a bit of a fail so uh, let's see what happens here he does one damage to all of us there for five credits and he did one damage so we definitely win the exchange there and this puts us in a really good position because he basically just wasted his entire turn uh, getting that huge Reichsbank the turn before and then blowing his turn that time really helped us. So we're just going to kill things. And uh, we still have the fighter there blocking the bomber. And then we're going to put Volk's Grenadier down because that's a nice big body. And uh, that 3-6 body will be hard for uh, him to deal with, I think, with those three cards in his hand. I know uh, maybe a bad joke there earlier, the stereotype, but I thought it was a, it was a good joke. You don't have a sense of humor unsubscribe all right here we go so he puts down a regular little tank soviet ally so not a lot of threats on the board right now we have that death from above in our hand iron from the north so we might be able to get the good pumping credits next turn to deal with more things so we haven't drawn any tanks of our own we're not getting the oh eagle claws eagle claws that's huge we're going to move on up. Eagle Claw. And then Artillery to finish off the tank. Hit face. No need to use Iron from the North yet because if we use it now, we would get, we'd have two credits and it doesn't give us any, would have given brought us up to three credits. So it doesn't give us any real advantage. We could have attacked with one more hit with the Artillery. We'll save it. Oh, enemy surrenders. They ran out of ammo. That's awesome. Good. Good win. So even after a really slow start, understanding how to value trade and chip away at the opponent, the game could turn around. All right. So we, uh, Germany level two, we get the, the Flam Panzer, which as I described, good card. Even with the recent nerf, not being able to hit air units anymore, it's still a good card. All right. We got the Greyhound in our hand and uh, that's really the key. It's a good start. And so we're on curve here. We got a one, two, three, four. So that's a good starting hand. And um, 
I mean, we don't have any low-cost infantry, so getting the Panzer 35 value was difficult. But, but we'll see how it goes. I mean, we're going to have a couple more draws before we're there. All right, so that's the anti-air gun. We don't have any air right now, so that doesn't bother us. If he takes away the smoke screen to attack us, we'll be able to kill it. And we got our own artillery ready, the T-19. Having the Greyhound into the T-19 is a really, really good starting hand. It's really what we want to start off with. We're playing against, we're at rank 17 now, so we went up. And now we're playing against a rank 16. So this is going to be a difficult uh, game here. So he uses Patriotic Firestorm right out of the gate. So this is the uh, Soviet artillery deck. Like, this is the top meta deck that we've seen and heard people... Uh, discussing here and there um, how complete his deck is i have no idea because uh so he goes with another patriotic firestorm so two of those gone right out of the gates uh, this puts us in a bad position right now okay so we got the good we got a tank top deck that's beauty we'll go kill the artillery so we got to keep count he's used two patriotic firestorms he's only got one more so potentially he'll have one more patriotic firestorm and two euros will be the huge buffs that he has left the Euros will give a plus three or three cost buff that call that will give him a plus three. All right, we get lucky there. The uh, Katusha doesn't proc. We now we get value off our Panzer Grenadier. Trade off the Katusha. We get the four three infantry down. So basically, this is uh, like Innocent Bubbles will say. You know, uh, this is like whack a mole. You just got to kill the artillery as soon as they come down. You don't want to leave any artillery on the board. It's really nice that we forced them to waste two patriotic firestorms off the beginning like that to deal with our early units that's a really good advantage for us there's a sherman there's some good draw hmm so we can move up and uh, we got two shermans in our hand so playing a sherman is uh is okay because we do have another one in our hand we can use one to feed the other so we can get the card draw i think just putting down four four units on the board is really valuable right now to be able to kill these one eight guards I mean, these 1-8 guards are just annoying. They're like big-ass mosquitoes with 8 health, you know, because they only got the one attack. But they do allow uh, the, his artillery to survive because we can't get at the artillery without an order. So we got we to gotta pound through that guard. There's the anti-tank gun. Those are the ones that are really problematic uh, because they will do plus 2 to a tank. So right now, just with those two artillery, he could kill our Sherman. That sucks, really. So it would cost us four, five, 5 credits just to kill that guard right now. Uh, we got the Mitchell in our hand, which, you know, if we get lucky, we can get value off the Mitchell if it hits one of the artillery. If it doesn't hit one of the artillery, then we're looking at, uh, uh, we're looking at a situation where the uh, B-25 will cost five credits to operate. So um, we have to get rid of that anti-air gun, but it still has smoke screen. He's got a Sherman down. We have Death from Above in our hand, which uh, we'll use now and see what we get. We, we take out the guard. That's meh. We'll put down the 1-3 with smoke screen. I mean, he's going to kill the Sherman straight up here. I mean, he's got the ability to. He's only got one card left in his hand, which is good for us. So we're not out of this yet. And if he's running supply chain, gives him, like, infinite draw. And we haven't seen war production or supply chain at all yet. So maybe he doesn't have those cards. Maybe this is not the full meta version yet, which would be kind of nice because we're only at rank 17 and 16 here seeing full meta this 1a guard's not in the meta so i think that this is just a uh, variation of the artillery deck so we go with one third chance of hitting an artillery uh, nice to hit that one because it gets rid of the uh, increased cost on our mitchell but at the same time i kind of would have rather hit the other artillery but hitting any artillery is good just kill artillery whack it down now the bomber can shoot past the guard, so if he doesn't put a fighter down, we could uh, kill his artillery, uh, make light work of all his artillery. Good combos to have with these decks, like if you have access to Land of the Free or the 75th Rangers uh, with USA, they're, they're really good because you can get rid of these operation costs and bring it down to zero. Uh, so we don't have any way to trigger Panzer 35 here, which is kind of why we're hanging on to it, right? We really want to get an infantry so we can draw, uh, get that down on the board rather with a zero op cost. He's not playing any airplanes, so our uh, blackout's not going to get value. Um, we're probably not going to get draw value on our Sherman. 
That doesn't have Blitz, Panzer Grenadier, but we definitely need to kill their artillery. And I mean, realistically, unless he has Yura in his hand, he's not killing the bomber with those two units. And then we just go wide with more attack units on the board. And uh, really, uh, he's in a bad spot here. He's got to deal with the bomber. That's his biggest threat. We don't have any units to be able to punch into the front line right now and get Sherman value. It has to be a U.S. unit, and that's one of the weaknesses with Sherman, with uh, USA as an ally. That's one of the weaknesses. And the problem is Germany just doesn't have a lot of card draw built into it. So using uh, USA as an ally, you can the Shermans are really solid tanks to begin with. And if you can pull off the value and get the card draw, that's great. But it is a lot harder when you're using it as an ally. Obviously, you only can have 12 USA cards. I mean, if I had to, I'd move the Mitchell up just to get the value. But uh, we'll see how this plays out. So he attacked with the two cards. Now he's going very slow with only two cards in his hand. Don't know what he's trying to do here. So we have the Panzer four. Good body to put down. We'll do our attacks. See what we can get here. We get value on the Panzer 35 now because we have the Panzer Grenadier down. And so there we go. Clear his board, move up the front line, and uh, take over. Hopefully now just slowly... Uh, Burn him down to zero health on that HP. Let's get some lethal action going. And we get the surrender again. That's awesome. From 20 health, he surrendered. So, again, we didn't even have to attack the HQ. Our Both HQs are at 20. Strictly playing control and value trading the best that we can. We uh, knocked him down. So, we're still rank 17. And uh, now we're playing against Sergeant W. Taps as a rank 17 as well. All right, so we get Reichsbank for our Reichsbank for the first time. And you want to time Reichsbank so that you actually have cards in your hand to maximize the value. Ooh, he gets Zukov. So there we go. We're going against some elites. You get Zukov down, and then he's able to play that 2 3 so Soviet infantry right away on turn one. Uh, normally it would be a three drop, I believe. Two or a three drop. Can't remember. But that guy heals. So when we kill that, whatever damage we put in onto that guy, he's going to heal. So his HQ is going to heal rather by the same amount. So you want to be wary of that. Like if you put down later in games, for example, if you buff your units or you play like big, big tanks down and that guy's on the board, you're just going to be aware that he's going to heal. So he just goes face uh, because uh, why not, right? Why trade? Make me trade. Not a bad choice. Make me spend my credits on trading. So I have to spend one credit to kill him. Plus he heals. So we're going to go down with what here? You only got two credits left. It's either the Panzer II or the T-19. And I think we go with the Panzer II into the front line. He kills it and then moves up. That costs two credits. So we slow him down so that he can't hit our HQ. So that's good news. Um, yeah, so there you go. Now he can move up. Problem is now, like, we don't have any Blitz. So we don't have any way to kill that tank. So he just plays the big infantry there. That infantry is a problem with ambush. Uh, he has the capability of healing himself when the start of the turn starts for the player. So he can attack with that, for example, or we can attack it. But if we don't kill it, it's just going to heal at the beginning of his next turn. So when you do attack that 3-4 infantry, you got to make sure you kill it. So what are we going to do here? We can Reichsbank and play two death from above next turn if we want. Or we can put some units down. So 4-3 could kill his tank, and we could death from above to hope to hit that 3-4. So he's really putting the pressure on us to trade. This is, this is definitely a tough game. He's got good cards. So I think we, we only have five credits, so... Hmm. And he's only got infantry on the board, which are slow. So... What are we going to do here? We could death from above. Yeah, we could right bank into uh, next turn. I have 10 credits next turn. That will allow us to play two death from aboves or, or more even. We can get the Mitchell down plus something else. Problem is if the Mitchell hits the infantry, it's just going to heal. All right, so he puts down that artillery. That artillery is a pain because it has fury and it reduces the attack of the unit until the next turn, I believe. Uh, we're in a tough spot now. I think we got to go with the double DFA here and hope that we hit the 3-4 and the artillery. 
And of course we don't. So hopefully this hits the artillery. Yeah, that's a better hit for us. Um, now we put down the plane. So he could kill our plane. And if we don't have anything to deal one damage to that thing before the start of his next turn, he's going to heal back to a 3-4. And he just burning skies our airplane and hits face. T-34 is down. This is not looking good. Hmm. I don't think we've made any real misplays here, realistically. This has just been a very difficult game. Typically, when I do that with the artillery, it's kind of like a, a, an attack bait. I mean, he's got eight, eight attack to the face right now. And we don't have a way to kill that tank, so... And he gets another 3-4 down. I'm not sure what we have that could actually save this game. I mean, we can't even kill the tank because it has the heavy armor. I think we're done. Let's see what that hits. Well, that hits the tank, so now we can kill it. So that's nice. And he does only have two infantry down, so they move slowly. So as long as he doesn't have a blitz unit, we're still in this. Mitchell came in big there. Bloody Sickle kills our tank. Oh, okay, well, dead. That's game right there. So the, the Zukov Elite gave him a fast start, and the Siberian Transfer with the nice big Elite there gave him the uh, T-34 to blitz in and kill us with. So I didn't notice if he just got that off his Bloody Sickle, but okay, we lost that one. No biggie. We move on. Still ranked 17. That was a rough game. All right, here we go. New game. So we got the Greyhound again and the T-19. So that's a good start. Let's see how this goes. Germany is a tough nation in the beginning because they are missing... Like, they have a couple of really strong archetypes, but in your starter decks, you're missing a lot of the cards to complete the package. So it is a tough one to play out. All right, so moving up. And punch in the face. There we go. Greyhound versus Greyhound. So hopefully he doesn't have a Woken Giant in his hand. If he does, he kills our Greyhound very easily. Oh, British ally. USA British. Okay. So. I think we should. We don't have enough credits. We're missing one credit. I was thinking if we were to play the. Uh, well, that's the Volks Grenadier, not the Panzer Grenadier. Never mind. All right, so we chip shot the Greyhound, brings it down to a one health. And that means that it will trade if he attacks us. All right, so he's got one more credit. He can attack again with the Fury unit. All right, so that was good. That worked out pretty good. Okay, let's go double artillery. Artillery is very, very good, very valuable. So we could have attacked him there, but let's just put more units down and then just see what happens. He's got a lot of cards compared to us, and that's just the cost of having to go first. So I think um, what we're looking for here now is uh, hopefully a big tempo play. Like if we could get some card draw going. So he ramps, plays the old milk truck. So we're just going to go big. Go wide. I mean, we're, we're worried about death from above, obviously. is a big removal card you could have. I mean, if we survive to turn 9, we got our B-17. We do have Blackout to pin an air unit if he plays it. Like, air units like Air Cobra or the P-40 Warhawk. And that's our card draw, too. So that's actually kind of nice. We kind of want him to play a plane so we can trigger that and get the card draw. Just not anything too strong. <laughs> we want to be able to kill it. So he draws cards, that's good, three of his credits, and now he's got a full mitt of cards there against our three cards in our hand. So this is feeling a bit rough right now, but we do have a big tank that, if it survived, <laughs> as he plays for the king. And what else does he have? Desert rats. <laughs> so, well, he had to spend a few cards, but he got it killed anyway. All right, so... We can just go wide again with our big bodies because his 2-2 two -two infantry can't attack us just yet. It can move up, but it can't attack. We just need bodies on the board uh, to see what we can come up with here. All right, so he plays the Hurricane as Blitz. Probably going to take out one of our artillery. We 
might just use the blackout on it anyways initially just so that we can draw a card. <clears throat> we definitely need card draw. Rice banks. I don't say that right, but it's the right bank. So we're going to pin it just so we can get a card draw. And we go draw into another potential uh, cantrip card to give us another replacement. So we definitely want to kill some units first. Hmm. <laughs> Move up to 4-3. So we can play the Panzer 38. We can play the Panzer. We can rush bank now. And that'll let us play our B-17 next turn. I mean, we don't have a lot of cards to work with here in terms of credits, but that at least lets us play the B-17 one turn early. I think we'll have 13 credits next turn. Here we go. All right, so he's got the pincer units down. So we got a breakthrough cards going on here. And like I said, we're further up the ladder, so we're going to start seeing a lot more challenging decks. He's got fourth Marines, so we got a whole lot of breakthrough deck going on here. If he's got to bolster the ranks in there, we're definitely in trouble. Uh, let's see. We can't kill both of those. It would be nice to kill that 2-5 so the B-17 would hit the 6-6. Six, six. Uh, I mean, otherwise we're looking at a 50-50 here. We could also put down the bomber because as of right now, the bomber is the B-25 rather is, is kind of safe. All right, we go for the 50-50 and move up. Oh, wow, we get some RNG. That's great, because we're playing with just starter cards here, man. So it's good that we get the RNG in our favor. It's only fair, right? This ain't over yet, but that was a nice roll. Wow, I did not see that coming. What does this guy have left in his hand? Okay. That RNG gave us the game. Beauty. So rank 17, still moving on up. So Sergeant FKTLP. <laughs> Whatever that's supposed to mean. And uh, rank 17 versus rank 17. No Greyhound yet. So we keep the 2 3 4. That was a bad mulligan. I should have mulliganed a lot harder to go after that Greyhound. I don't know if that'll cost us the game here. We're going against Germany. I should have just kept the Sherman and mulliganed everything else. Okay, so he gets his uh, 1 3 tank down. Some kind of Panzer. I don't remember the name of all the German tanks. They're all very similar names. Panzer this, Panzer that, Panther this. You know what I'm saying? All right, so we're going to get our Panzer Grenadier down on turn two. We got our Volks Grenadier in hand. It's a 3-6. It's nice to get down. We got the MEBF-109 Fighter Jet. <laughs> I mean, we've got some good cards in our hand. We just got to ramp up a little bit of our credits here so we can get there to play them. All right, so we got to we got to play our Panzer Grenadier here because that trades off with that tank and survives it. So unless he's got another card in there to deal with it, let's see what he plays here. Probably not going to attack our unit because he doesn't kill it, force us to attack. Iron from the north. So we can go kill it. And we can move up. Play iron from the north here. Gives us a few more credits. And then we can... Uh, the plane's a decent play. Putting down an aircraft here on turn three like this. That's pretty good. Well, he may have uh, sky barons or something and deal with that pretty quick on turn four. It's a four cost. Kills the plane and gives him a card draw. But it's a good pressure play on him. So he goes with a... The 4-5 Blitz tank. What are we going to do here? We don't have a US in the front, so we're not getting draw value. Say so we're struggling to get the value off of our uh, Shermans in this series. Yeah, so we just hit face. I'm trying to think, like, if he has tax strike or... Um, Joint operation, he can kill our unit and still move up. I'm hoping he has to trade good. So he has to trade with that. So if he moves up, then our Volks Grenadier can finish off that tank and we don't lose our plane. Which is great news if we can keep that plane alive for a little while. 
All right, so we floated one credit, so we're thinking maybe if he's playing the Careless Talk, we've got to be aware of that when we deploy our next unit, that he might uh, he might eat us with a Careless Talk. So a Greyhound to the front and attack, maybe? One, two, we could do that and attack for four. Well, we just go with the bigger body, the four, five. It's not a bad play. We're on turn six here. I don't know if he has Eagle Claw. We give him good value here, hit, ripping across three units. He's got a big hand, and going wide against Germany is not a bad idea. I mean, we could go hit face there. It's a little bit greedy. Uh, I think putting down the 4-5 is a good play because it's uh, getting some muscle on the board to deal with exactly this. This is the problem with Germany, these huge tanks, these 6-5 tanks. And this is a special. The 6-5 here is a special. It cannot be targeted by enemy orders. So if we had death from above in our hand, for example, that would be great because we could just nuke it. It would be great value, but uh, we don't. So nothing we could do here. Waiting for the enemy to pass the torch over. We got one credit left again, so we're wondering if he has a careless talk or not. He didn't play it last turn, so he probably doesn't have one. All right, buddy, hit the button. And we wait. I don't know what's going on. Maybe they disconnected. <laughs> it's taken a while. Oh, I've done that before. You think you hit the button, but you didn't or whatever. All right, so we can Greyhound to the front. Sometimes people run the clock down to trick you that they have countermeasures, but, uh, you know, so you should be aware of that, but we'll just see what happens here. You didn't play a countermeasure. So we could push all up to the front, get... Uh, yeah, attacker continue going wide. I don't know. Put down the artillery. He's still got a lot of cards in his hand. And I, I'm playing on the side of caution a little bit, I guess. But after further thought, if you know what, screw it. Let's just hit face for four. We got him down to 13. Having three units in the front line is really good. Because, I mean, it costs three credits to operate that tank. So that's going to slow him down. It eats up almost half his credits just to attack and kill one unit. And I put that 3-2 way over on the right. I should have put it on the left and so that they would both be protected by the guard. Because that 4-5 unit gets guard when he's in the front line. And I likely just forgot that. So be aware of that. When you push the 4-5 infantry up to the front line, he becomes a guard. And put your units on either side to protect them. Now he can trade off and hit that 3-2 and um, get good value. But I'm wondering if he's even still playing the game or not. Yep, he's still there. All right, welcome back. Oh, gets his flam panzer down, kills our greyhound. All right. We have another greyhound. And now we could proc our Sherman and get draw. Well, that's really good for us to get some cards. That's good value there. That's a good value trade. Take out that tank. All right, so I like the Mitchell right now. He's going to get a three for one off his Flam Panzer because he already killed one Greyhound on deploy. Now he can kill that Greyhound, and then we got to put another body into it to kill the Flam Panzer. We got our blackout in our hand now, which is nice. If he does drop down an FW, for example, or any other kind of plane, we could pin it and draw a card. Ah, and there's the MEBF, so that's going to buff by one. Um, it's a different uh, BF plane, but it, it buffs by one, uh, one, one if uh, the opponent has the front line. So we need to take the front line and not give it back. So our plane still survives, which is great. So now we have to go on the front line because we don't want him taking the front line. We can put down another plane. All right. So if he's able to kill us, get front line again, that plane becomes a 5-5. Five, five, so it's risky. I could have just killed it. See, I like what I like our options here with the B-25. Oh, he's got the, the high end, so that's a blitz plane. Oh, he goes after our plane. I thought he would have killed the Sherman. That's fine. Okay. 
All right, so we can... Okay, so we kill his plane, the 4-4 plane with our Sherman, and then we deploy the B-25, and that kills his his uh, his his Kian. Perfect. That's it. That's a good value right there. All right, so we're staying on top of them, trading one turn at a time, looking for the best, most efficient, credit efficient trades that we can make. Hopefully, eventually take over some control and be able to start finishing off his HQ. Almost halfway there. All right, Goshikin is a pain in the butt. We got to kill that thing. He does not take damage back when he attacks on their own turn. So it's immune. So we have to kill it because if he attacks us, he just gets to mow us down and doesn't take any damage back. So our bomber can deal with it. So trades his verbal win for our ME. That's cool. All right, so we have, uh, we're going to have to go into that Goshkin with our bomber. We have no choice. I mean, it's not a bad trade. We already killed one unit with the deployment effect, and now we get to kill a Goshikin with the Bitchel. That's good value. Just doing so. We'll have uh, seven credits left, so we're trying to figure out what we'll do with it. We have to do that. Unfortunately, the math doesn't work out great for us. Throw down an artillery and a fighter. We have good size units on the to, to put out there. We got those two five drops, those big tanks. So he's gonna bounce our plane. And he's gonna blitz with the condor. Alright. I'm <laughs> feeling like we're in a bit of a tough spot now. So eleven credits. We definitely need to put down a big boy here. We put down the two big tanks. And we could have put down the fighter because that would have blocked the uh, the bomber. But realistically, he probably would have just killed the fighter with the tank. So both these guys can cover the tank. So now he can kill one of our tanks with his. He could trade trade up on it if he wants. All right, that was that was a good turn there, I think, because uh, now we can kill his bomber and put some other guys back on the support line. Oh, he still got four credits left, so we could play another card. We didn't play anything, so kind of worried about uh, Nightwatch. I could uh, kill a unit and give him a card draw when we deploy. All right, no countermeasures on the front line. Whenever Germany folds credits, you got to be thinking countermeasures. It's really risky. So that's a good card to play because if he did have the, uh, I think it's not Nightwatch, but I think it's Night, Night Rangers or Nightwatch, whatever it's called, I can't remember. Uh, but at least with that one, if you would have killed it, we draw a card from it. So at least it replaces itself if the countermeasure would have been triggered. So no countermeasures. So we don't have to worry about it, but you always have to think about it. Oh, so he plays a Tiger IH. Okay. Wow, that's wild. Okay. That's a huge tempo loss for him. Because we're able to plug the front line with three units. And uh, give our friendly tanks plus two. And smack face and win. So I guess... Uh, I guess the tempo loss doesn't really matter, but Tiger IH is an attractive card. When you see it in your deck, you're like, oh, wow, look at all the power. But it's so expensive that it really requires a little bit of skill and timing to deploy it properly. So there we go. Germany level 7. One loss in that string of games, and we got level 7 done. There we go.